Gwen. I just wanted to do a little video to talk about my mini mixed media medallions class. A little bit about the projects that we'll do in class, some of the techniques we'll learn, and if you're already signed up for the class, some of the things that you might want to bring you, bring with you, and some of the things that I will be bringing and providing for the class. So you can see these are some of the samples that I've put together. You may have already seen these online. Got some different ideas. These are all very much in my style. You can adapt this to however you like the types of things that you like as well. Some different things that you can do. You can take these, you can put them on the cover of books, you could turn them into a brooch or a necklace. I can show you how to add the hardware to that so that you can have that available to you as an option. Or they can become a centerpiece in a shadow box or a shrine or some kind of assemblage, anything like that. There are a lot of different things that you can do with these. We'll show you in class. We'll be able to make at least one, hopefully two. So for the class, one of the things that I will be providing is a bunch of different options for the base of the medallion. You can make your own or you can use some of the ones that I'll be bringing you and I'll show you different ways that you can do that. And then one of the things you get as part of the class is a quarter pound of the AV's epoxy clay. This is what I use a ton and we'll really use these as the foundation of the assembling of our pieces. And this is a $10 value, but we're, we're including that in the class. So you'll get that, which is more than enough for one or two medallions, maybe three or four or more. It depends on how you use it in the class. So you'll get that and you'll get the bases. And I will bring a few things with me, some different options for stuff to stick out. I will bring eyeballs. These are just little resin eyeballs in different colors that you can use if you wanted to do something along the lines of this piece. Um, I will also have a few different options for beads. There are some different, I really love to use, I call them chip beads. I don't know if that's the actual name of them, but just these types of beads that some of them have holes, some of them don't. They're like broken pieces of larger beads. They work really well for this type of thing. You can get them in strands or individually. So I will bring some as an option here. You can see just all different sorts of things that you could use for that. So I will have some of that with me. And the other thing that you will want to look around for to bring with you are things that you can stick into the clay in order to build your structure. Because the, one of the main differences between this and the mixed media shadow boxes class that some of you may have taken is that we will start out very similarly, but then we're going to build a structure here that is mostly dependent on the things that we stick into it and not so much the base shape that we're going to start with. So where you go is going to depend on what you bring with you. So you can see we could go if you have butterfly wings, if you have different charms, there are some wing charms, I will have a few of those with me, some jewelry bits. Metal findings are going to be a big thing that you may want to bring. So all of this kind of thing, different shapes. I like things like this that will stick out. That kind of thing will be perfect. So think about this type of thing. You can see this is exactly what I used on that one. These are all different options. And look at the shape of them. Don't just look at what it is. Don't look, this is a bird. It's got a funky thing coming out of the end of it. That may be a really good option for you. So metal findings are a big thing that you may be interested in bringing with you. You can see also that this one had a stone in it. So these different types of things, you could use something like that as the basis to build off of, or even when it's something like that. So just think of different things that you may like to build into a medallion. Then one of the other things that I really love to use, I this is mostly Turkmen jewelry pieces. It's just bits and pieces of things, but you can see, you know, I love to use these buttons and all of that different fun fun stuff that coins this kind of thing uh, I think these are really fantastic for putting into these kinds of little mini assemblage pieces so broken jewelry of any kind is always great the other thing that I really like are things that have ooh, things that have windows of some kind in them that you can build off of and and create something. So look for things that have holes in them. They can be square, round, oval, and what you know, whatever you want, but things that have holes in them are great for layers. As always, lots of different kinds of jewels. I'll have some with me. If this is your thing, you may want to bring some. And then along that same line, I love 
sari patches. These are little tiny beaded patches that you use, uh, that they put on saris to embroider them, and you can see that's one of them right there. So those are some things that you may be interested in bringing with you. Um, micro beads, um, jewels on strings. I really like to use the pearls and the string rhinestones, those kind of thing. I'll probably have some of that with me as well, not a whole lot. And then the other thing that I love, and you're going to see my love for them here, I call these sticky outies. And I love anything that you can take and that will stick out of something. Spike beads, crystals, shells, any of this kind of thing. Stuff that you can embed in clay that will stick out and just really create some dynamic elements. So if you have things like that, sticky outies, those are always a good choice for this type of project. And then other stuff that you may want to bring, if you want to do any kind of rusting, you may want to bring some rust paste with you. If the Finnebear Viva has some nice rust paste, we'll also show you how to do your own rusting with paint and texture powder if you haven't already learned that in another class. And then one of the other things that I'll show you are different ways to alter the metal and uh, we'll do a way to prime that so that you can paint it and then also some different things that you can do with it to change the color besides paint. So there will be some fun stuff there that we can do. And then one of the most important things aside from the clay is that you'll need other kinds of adhesive. So I have several of the types of adhesive that I use on a regular basis. You do not have to have all of these, but some good strong white glue would be very helpful. I like Weld Bond because it works for just about everything, but a good strong white glue would work like in Aline's craft glue, that would be fine. E6000 or Goop, I always like these a lot as well. They, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm actually kind of liking Goop better nowadays, but these will both work. I, I like these a lot. For some of the detail work, whoop, dropping everything. For some of the detail work, Loctite, this is a super glue. Um, that will be very helpful if you have something like that. A PVA glue, uh, I use this one in the fine liner bottle and um, that can be very helpful. And then a polymer medium or a, it's a pouring medium if you get the Liquitex brand. I like these and I put them in these little needle top bottles so that I can use that as well as part of my work and I'll show you how I use that if you haven't seen that before. So adhesives are really important so you want to bring a couple of different ones. You want some kind of a clear strong glue, you want a strong white glue, and you'll also get your clay in class and that should pretty much cover it for you. So hopefully that helps you to know what you're looking for, what kinds of things you want to bring. Um, I'll look at this one in particular. This is kind of a riff off of a Victorian lover's eye where they would take a painting of an eye of their lover and have that as some kind of a memento so that only they knew who it was. And it was supposed to be this mysterious kind of thing. I thought that was really cool. If you're interested in doing something along these lines, you may want to have an illustration or some kind of a copy that you could bring. I wouldn't bring anything too, too big, but that's an option as well if you wanted to have some kind of a framed image. It doesn't have to be an eye, but that could be something that you want to bring with you as well. So hopefully that gets you excited, gives you some ideas for the kinds of things that you may want to do in class. Uh, I would suggest to not bring everything that you have, but to pick out some pieces that you think that you would use. Don't get crazy because we don't want to spend too much time trying to pick out the parts that you're going to use in class, but you want to bring enough that you have some options so that you can pivot if you get into class and decide to change what you're doing. Just don't bring everything, don't bring your entire drawer of sticky outies. I know I will not be, mostly because I can't get it in my suitcase, but anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas and gets you excited, and I hope I'll see you there.